Okay. So, hello there, folks. This is the Why Our World interview series. And in this series of videos, we are interviewing our users from all over the world and getting their experience about being an, a member of the R community, about their insights into their R journey, their experiences, and so on. Today, we are joined by Saranjit Kaur. I hope you, I'm pronouncing that right. And That's you're joining right. us from India. Uh, so, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you in, the, in India? Where are you based? Uh, uh, hi, I'm Saranjit. I'm based in Ahmednagar. This is a district in the Maharashtra state of India. It lies in the western part of the Indian Peninsula. That's the state that is uh, where Mumbai is. Uh, Mumbai, yes, that's formerly right. known as Bombay. Uh, I think many people around the world would know Mumbai as a big sort of cultural capital. The film industry there, it's a big uh, Bollywood and also music and art and so on. Uh, and it's one of the major cities of the world and major cities of India. That's, but it's not the only city. Uh, it's quite a lot of other big, large cities in the near vicinity. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. So nearby there is another city called Pune which is also very famous for its education and the IT sector over there. Okay, good stuff. So, uh, do you mind me asking, what do you work at yourself? Or what are you, what's your role right now you're working at? Uh, right now, I'm uh, pursuing my MPhil in statistics from University of Pune. So, I have completed my graduation in statistics, my BSc, my master's, MSc in statistics. Uh, beyond post that, I have worked as a junior research fellow in the Department of Statistics at Pune University and also worked for a couple of startups and now pursuing my MPhil. Good stuff. So I'm guessing that you've studied statistics, that that is where you might have encountered R for the first time. Yes, that's right. So I started using R during my uh, uh, graduation uh, course so the first year was basically using excel and from the second year onwards i started using r for my all my statistics uh, course wherever analysis was involved how did you find using r uh, for the first time do you remember your experience or your your first impressions of r uh, it was quite intuitive so how we were introduced to r was uh, earlier, we used to do all the matrix multiplications by hand in our notebook. So what I prof our professor told us that this is an easier way where you could get your matrix multiplications done really easily. So that was the first thing that I did in R was matrix multiplication. So yeah, I was quite. Dude, was this? A, I know for myself uh, that. The university was the first time I encountered coding, proper coding, and it took. I have to say, it was very tough for me at the start. What was your experience like when you started coding for the first time? Was it in the university? Uh, no, actually, uh, not R, but we were introduced uh, computer programming languages from our school itself. So oh, there was a language called as Logo. Way back, uh, it used the turtle cursor. So this was a very like old language that, uh, when we started at school and then also moved to QBasic, then C, C++, and then later on to R during okay. our university. So you're very comfortable with it. That's very good, actually. I wish I had that. Uh, tell me, uh, when you were in university, you were using R. Now, would it be fair to say that when you were using it, you were using it for statistical purposes, like, for example, performing hypothesis tests, doing time series, linear regression? That was the emphasis of your usage in R. Would that be correct? Yes, that's right. So initially, it was uh, uh, basically we started with graphing and matrix uh, calculations in R and plotting visualization. So that was our first introduction to R. And then as we advanced in our course, there were more uh, subjects that uh, required the use of R. So linear regression, multivariate analysis, uh, hypothesis testing, that is statistical inferences, those courses, and then uh, later on also for our projects. So in our final year, we did have projects which we completely performed on R, the analysis. So for our graduation, as well as for our master's, uh, the projects that we did were in R. Okay. 
Uh, out of curiosity, was there obviously there was a lot of like uh, usage from the point of view of statistics. Did you learn or was it commonplace to use R for data processing, let's say, at the time? It was probably deep plier and tidyverse are very new, so but like you know, just using it for data man management and data contortion and so on. So uh, when we, I was pursuing my graduation, it was uh, basically uh, the use of conventional R, uh, the base R, not even R Studio during my graduation. So uh, that time, uh, Dplyr and Tidyverse were not that popular. So yeah. uh, uh, we used to use the traditional uh, uh, functions, functionalities of R, uh, the non R Studio phase of R. That is where we started using R, and uh, so. Our professors used to tell us that prior to R, there was a language called as S, uh, which was preceding R, and many of its fundamental um, uh, fundamentals were adopted when R was uh, being built yeah. by yeah. core R founders. So, yes. So not tidyverse, not tidyverse at the time. Tidyverse okay, yeah. is quite a recent learning. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And like. Uh, so just actually, uh, let's talk about your uh, postgraduate uh, level studies. What was what's your MPhil in statistics? Can you tell us more about that? What's your emphasis there? Uh, so uh, uh, initially, uh, there was a, a junior research fellowship project uh, after my MSc that I got into. So that was uh, on conditional duration modeling in finance. So that is where I started using uh, more advanced R packages like data.table uh, or the functions uh, of those sort. And I also use it, used R stan for some of my econometrics computations and modeling. Um, uh, and beyond that, in my MPhil, actually, I started using Julia also. Uh, that is another programming language. So that is what I use for my MPhil. Right now, I'm using Julia in it. Uh, and R I'm using for projects uh, which are not directly related to my studies. So there are some other project, projects that got funded, uh, project that I wrote got funded by the R Foundation recently. Uh, it is for developing the R developer guide. So that is where I'm using R and That's a good question. We'll come back to that. That's very interesting material there. We'll, we'll talk about that shortly again. Uh, so, um, you are also involved in our ladies yes yes so i am about that. Uh, okay i'm the co-founder co-organizer of our ladies pune chapter so this is what i started with my friend in 2020 so actually we started the work on it uh, uh late uh, 2019 and uh, uh, by 2020, we had already launched a couple of, uh, like, conducted a couple of e events for the chapter. Uh, so the idea of it had come from other community, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, attendance that we used to have. So there was a Pi Data group in Pune. So we used to attend over there. This is where I got I got to know this person with whom I started, Our Ladies Pune. So like we were of the view that, okay, there are Python groups in Pune, why not there be a R group in Pune as well? So that's when we contacted our ladies global. And I also volunteer for the global team uh, for uh, tracking the chapter activity worldwide and also help them in some other tasks that are currently being done. That's very interesting stuff. So lots of material to talk about there. So just actually, what was your experiences like of setting up the uh, the local Our Ladies chapter? Uh, oh. What advice would you give to somebody in another city of India, let's say, or in you know in that time zone? What would you sort of give advice? Would you give? Uh, was the was the local university helpful? Uh, yes, so uh, at the time when we started this chapter, uh, I was uh, uh, quite largely involved with my university. So I, I, could, I did get a lot of help from my university because they helped us with the venues initially. Like, so if we start from the very start, so our first point was to contact the global team. That's when uh, we got a response, a positive response for, from them. And we were also very hopeful. Okay, so someone is responding to whatever we are trying to start over here. 
So I was connected with uh, this person. She had individually contacted Our Ladies Global. So Our Ladies Global, uh, like they asked us to talk amongst ourselves that uh, can we come up with a common plan. And that's when uh, we both met and start, like planned out how we are going to start this chapter. Uh, so the first thought we had was, okay, so all the technical stuff will be handled by the global team. What about the venue? So that's when our university helped a lot. So they provided a, a dedicated classroom to us, which on weekends after lectures was free to be used by our chapter. So uh, that is where, so the first meetup that we conducted, uh, fortunately we had Susan Holmes from Stanford who was visiting Pune wow. at the yeah. time. Yeah, so she took our first uh, meetup, and Amazing. that was a very uh, yeah. overwhelming yeah. response. Yes, so like many people had attended the very first meetup. So that's how it started, and then later uh, from that meetup itself, one person contacted that can we take this next section for you? So we were like, okay, yes, you can. So she said that I want to teach Git uh, to novice users. So that is that is how we got our second second speaker for for the next event. Uh, in one of the event, even I I was hosting one of the events. So that's how we started in person. And later on, it shifted virtually due to the uh, mm -hmm. ongoing crisis, the lockdown and stuff. So We'll talk about that again, actually. So, so I'm very interested in your um, uh, Our Lady's global role about chapter activity. So just tell us a little bit about that. First off, how many chapters are there now? There's chapters all over the world. Uh, so there are above 196 chapters right now in Our Ladies uh, all over the world. Uh, what I do is uh, suppose some chapter wants to restart. So they have been act inactive for a while and they want to restart. So they can contact me. I can help them to set up their uh, infrastructure again or at least point them to the right person who can help them with the setting up of their chapter. There are some chapters who are voluntarily trying to retire. So that is where I can help them again if they want to retire or they want to hand over their responsibility to another organizer or yeah. there is someone. Yeah. So that is how I try to connect them with other people or provide whatever information I have with me that helps them. Yeah, uh, I, 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 it's, it's a fact of life. That I, I know this from experience that running a, a chapter of any sort of description, like a, a, our user group or our ladies or anything like that is very challenging. And if you do make mm -hmm. it work, it, it, you can go, definitely congratulate yourself. But if you can't make it work, there are plenty of people out there who try their best, but you know, it's a really hard thing to do. So if it doesn't work out, you know, mm -hmm. That's that. That's unfortunately a very common occurrence. But this, it's you know you try your best. So also actually, just uh, tell us about the uh, Our Ladies chapters around India. So there's obviously quite a few in India, uh, Sri yes. Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal. Any of those countries? Uh, yes, there are quite a few in India. There is one in Bangalore. There is uh, in Mumbai, in Chennai, in Delhi. Uh, ours is recent, so in Pune also. So uh, basically, in every uh, ho every part of India, there is one chapter that is working. Uh, nearby, I have heard about the Nepal chapter and also about the Sri Lanka chapter, but we haven't collaborated as such uh, until now. So there are plans, uh, or if someone, some of those uh, organizers get in touch with us, we would be really happy to organize a joint meetup with them. Uh, uh, there are these chapters in India are also quite active, uh, like post lockdown, they have been, uh, there have been virtual events. So there are speakers from all over the world that are helping or trying to help these chapters to host their meetups. So that is uh, really helpful. Um, uh, and about, yes, you did ask about how would a new person start a chapter in their city. So it is quite easy if they just uh, contact the global team once and they can get all the instructions and then set the, they are set to like start their chapter. So if there are multiple people contacting from the same city, the global team actually links all of them. And if they can come up with a common uh, place where they can start this, so that is how they can get going. 
just uh, let's uh, uh, sort of explore. Uh, Pune is a big university city, I believe. It's a sort of education sector. Yes, big education, education sector. So, so it's 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 fair to say that a, a, a thriving Our Ladies chapter should do well there, because I know that there's actually yes. quite a lot of other uh, organizations. Uh, there's a Wimmel DS chapter there, I believe, also. Yes, uh, but yes, we. Yeah. So that just, is a yeah. So just the next question really is the interaction between R, Python, Julia, even what's the sort of general data science community structures like in India and Pune? Uh, I, can, I can speak for Pune first. So uh, generally, uh, when we started Our Ladies Pune, PyData Pune was really helpful uh, for uh, to us. So they were very open to collaborate with us and we even collaborated a couple of events with Pi Data Pune uh, with WIDS ML, uh, uh, Women in Data Science Group. Uh, we haven't collaborated but we have worked as outreach partners for them uh, last year. Uh, this year uh, also we tried but uh, due to some time limitations we could not. But yes, so as outreach partners we do support each other and for collaborations or for conducting workshops, joint workshops, we are always ready because uh, what is generally observed is the under-representations of girls in such meetups. So uh, if there is a meetup which can uh, help the minority gender to come forward, uh, people are really happy to have such collaborations. Good stuff. Uh, with with regard to India, uh, one must bear in mind that the the distances uh, between each cities are still quite um, it's quite large. It's a, it's it's a, it's a very very large country. So I, I believe that Mumbai is like three or four hours drive. Uh, that's the nearest by city, but still that's quite a distance. Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, the other famous cities I know in that part of India would be. Well, I don't know if they're near, but Bengaluru and uh, Hyderabad. Yes, yes. They're about eight hours or something like that. So, yes, it's, so about... it's still quite substantial distances. And so that would probably would make integration hard for live in-person events. Yes, uh, for in-person, it is a bit challenging. But, if, but because now uh, most of the events are virtual, so it is not much of a challenge right yeah. now to collaborate and work with them. Yeah. So. Have you ever considered having an R conference in India? Or is that uh, we discussed? Have, uh, we ne never really discussed, but we can because uh, what I learned from the global team is there are chapter, there are vector level grants that are given for hosting such conferences at local level. So maybe we can come up with such an idea if other chapters are really interested in investing into such an idea mm, that'd be great an yes. r conference india an indian r conference now i just actually uh we were talking about virtual events there um, so uh, virtual events are online and why are have virtual events and we have a big uh built up a very big community in india or sorry uh, europe and africa now that is sort of uh, influenced by the the fact that we share time zones in Europe and India, sorry, Europe and Africa, but India is like five and a half hours ahead of UTC. So uh, an evening interview or an evening webinar in Europe takes place just after midnight in India. So there's a disconnect there that it's harder for Indians to participate in European level events. Uh, actually, uh, if we compare the level of discomfort, it is more discomfort to uh, participate in the U.S. time zones yeah. because that is uh, quite a significant time difference. But with Europe, the time difference is not that significant. So like four to five and a half hours is still manageable. Uh, but yes, it is difficult when it is uh, too much towards the uh, midnight hours uh, or the later evening hours. Um, so it would be helpful if uh, some sessions are recorded, but then again, we live, uh, we miss the chance of uh, live participating in those events That's because only we are listening the recorded part of it. So we cannot really participate or maybe, um, I don't know, maybe some channel is still kept open for us to participate, say on Slack, where we can 
hear the recorded session and ask our questions later on. I don't know how, how this time zone can be solved. Uh, I don't think it'll be solved easily, but it, it is good that people are starting to talk about it and po point it out more and sort of recognize that it's not as easy for everyone to participate on, uh, unless you be very careful about time zones. Mm -hmm. So uh, you actually, there's a, we've still actually got a few questions here. This is going to turn into a very good interview. Uh, first off, you mentioned that you were working with the R Foundation. Tell us some more about that. So actually, uh, it, it is a, a, like, initially I participated for Google Summer of Code in 2020 with the Julia Language Organization. So all this actually started because uh, of my involvement with uh, our ladies. So that is where I got to know that uh, how interaction with the global team or people all over the world happens over Slack. So first of all, I started uh, volunteering for International Women's Day for Our Ladies Global. And I uh, actively started contributing to the uh, Slack uh, uh, community, our community. And later on, then I also discovered the Julia community. I was practicing Julia for quite some time. And uh, eventually I got selected to Google Summer of Code with Julia in 2020. Uh, towards the end of uh, uh, Google Summer of Code, I uh, had uh, contacted Heather Turner from Forwards um, and uh, with the idea in mind. So that time uh, she was also interacting with others that we should have a developer guide, uh, our developer guide, uh, so that it makes it easy for uh, uh, new or new contributors to onboard uh, in the R open source project. So that is where we started writing a proposal for uh, such a guide and we tried uh, submitting it to our foundation and fortunately they accepted our project and agreed to fund us so uh, i have started that project on 22nd of feb 2021 and michael lawrence and heather turner are supervising that project for me for uh, until 22nd may so it's a three month project and i hope to learn a lot of things and come up with something interesting via this project uh, just actually, we'll, do, we'll, we'll finish up soon. You're actually involved in the Julia community. Just sort of tell us a little bit about your experiences there. Oh, it's, it has been an excellent experience so far. Uh, so uh, I was uh, initially not much involved, but then uh, I uh, over there also I started with Slack. Uh, that is the way that I started my conversation. And uh, there was no community in India channel as such till then. So there were channels in uh, China and other parts of the world. So I asked them if a community in India channel is possible and they reacted really positively and started this community of India channel. Um, and then later on, I also contacted them uh, because uh, that time I got to know that there is a program called Summer of Code by Google Summer of Code. And then I started, uh, what what is it about? I started searching about it and I was having a uh, some previous work in a uh, topic that I put forward in it uh, and that topic was not selected but eventually I got into some topic that got selected into uh, the summer of code and uh, I worked with a Turing team of Julia organization and got to know many other people in that community as well. Uh, so Julia community is uh, budding, is still in the budding stage but yes they are also doing quite some good work uh, of inclusivity and involving people all over the world good stuff and uh, that's great uh, so uh, um, one of my friends and a, a, a contributor to yr uh, paul palmes is very much a proponent of interoperability of r julia and python so i think there's a sort of great future ahead of combined workflows where we get the best of all R and Julia together. And it's very exciting. I, I, I really like the fact that, you know, he said that if you learn R, that you'll still be able to sort of utilize it. If you, you know, want to bring Julia into your workflow that you can really get the best of both worlds. So yes. Saranjit, uh, I think we leave it there. So that was really a really great interview. And um, okay. hopefully this will be, you know, the first of, many interactions between yourself and the YR Foundation. Yes, yes, it Great is stuff. indeed.
Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.